You're probably saying to yourself, who is this girl and why does she have a TV show? My name is Chelsea Cross and over the past seven years I have talked about so many topics on my radio show and people are always asking for more information. I've been lucky enough to interview experts of all backgrounds and share inspiring stories of incredible people around the world. I wanted to create a platform from my generation for my generation. And finally, it's time to hear the perspective of people living in it instead of prior generations trying to understand it. You now have a platform to relate to and parents will have a platform to learn from. I want to put a fresh take on talk and empower my generation to have their opinions heard. I want to you to be a part of each and every episode, so pull up your Twitter feed and let's start talking online as well as here on the Chelsea Cross Show. You know all the questions you ask the internet because you're too scared to say them out loud? Well, it's time to stop being afraid and start talking. Relationships, college, jobs, celebrities, social issues, and sex. Then we'll get into the taboo stuff. The Chelsea Cross Show, a fresh take on talk. What's happened to romance, dating, and the orgasm? Seven out of ten women and nearly one-third of men have faked an orgasm, according to new research. My first guest is sexologist Dr. Jill McDevitt. Thank you for being here today. My pleasure. When I, when I heard the statistics, 70% of women fake orgasm, I, my jaw dropped. I yeah. said, this is too high of a number. Why is this happening? <laughs> why? Why? Yeah, I know. That's my question. I go, when I give my, uh, my female orgasm presentation, which I do for colleges, that's my question. I'm like, let's break this down. Orgasm, good. Faking, why are you trying to not have a good thing? Um, there's a lot of reasons why, but the reasons that I talk about in the program are threefold. First, so much misinformation about how female genitals work. Mm -hmm. We're not taught about it in schools. There's a lot of misinformation, so people are not exactly sure of all the intricacies of female genitals. There's also misinformation about how orgasm works. Um, and then the third one is about uh, how women feel about their genitals. And if you think that they're gross or you know, you're very uncomfortable with them, that translates into an inability or less of ability to orgasm, which leads them to feel the need to fake it. So what can women do to empower themselves and feel more comfortable of reaching the point of climax? Well, on all three of those fronts, you know, you can work w within those. So, for example, in the last piece about the body image, or mm -hmm. uh, body image as it relates to genitals, is we have to stop looking at vulvas and vaginas as disgusting. Um, I mean, just today, I literally had someone be like, ew, in response to the word vagina. And that's just not, a, yeah, if you think something is gross, then how can you want to celebrate it and have it be a, a wonderful, pleasurable part of an experience that you have? Mm -hmm. um, as far as the misinformation, well, that's why you need sex educators. <laughs> that's why I am on this crusade to be teaching women what's going on with their bodies and, and how to make them function. They also... Mm -hmm need to be masturbating. Women, everybody needs to be masturbating because how can you expect someone else to know what's going on with your body if you don't if know you your own body? Yourself. Exactly. For sure. Exactly. You know, I think a lot of people are scared to explore masturbation because it's such a taboo topic. And the reality is, is that we're in year 2013 and sex and orgasms and masturbation are still so taboo. People were even saying to me, your first show, you're talking about orgasms. And I said, everybody should just deserves to have one, but why is it still taboo in 2013? I don't understand. Well, sex in general is very, very taboo still. I mean, absolutely. Like, I mean, I'm sure there are certain things I couldn't even explain as in depth as I do in front of a college classroom because we're on television and, you know, there's just all these rules and policies and, you know, people are worried about their children hearing and it's very deep seated culturally and it exists on so many levels. And since orgasm is sexual, we have orgasm being stigmatized as well. You know, it was clear to me that people were yearning for more information. And when I stumbled upon Francisco in Union Square, we were flabbergasted to hear what he had to say. Check it out. Do you feel that girls don't deserve orgasms every time that they're having sexual intercourse? Oh my gosh, people totally deserve orgasms. Okay, good. No, no, no. I was so nervous. <laughs> I was like, you can't be anti-orgasm. No, I am so pro-orgasm. Pro-orgasm. <laughs> pro-orgasm. <laughs> pro <laughs> 